Hello and welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to paint with you today. We are going to be painting these fabulous butterflies today. Um, and I'm super excited to do this project with you. And there are two special things about this video. One is that you may be here because you have recently seen me in person and you have a kit that goes with this lesson. So you have the paper, the outline, the uh, paintbrush, as well as paints to go with this. If you are following along from home and you don't have a kit, that is totally fine. All of my videos will, you can follow them with your own supplies at home. So we are gonna be using just a few supplies. Um, three colors, we're using Windsor & Newton today. I'm using Purple Lake, Phthalo Blue, as well as black. So, and that will get you two different color schemes for your two different butterflies. So you can do either one. Uh, we're also using one brush for the whole thing. I'm using a size four Princeton Select brush. You can throw in a bigger brush at the end for the splatters, but I'll show you that when we get there, but not necessary. And then paper, I'm just using Arsh 100% cotton watercolor paper, whatever you pay, whatever paper you have will do just fine for this project. Um, and last but not least, the second thing that's special about this video is that I have already recorded it once. So you are getting the second take. The first take had no sound to it. So a whole video, a whole lesson, but you couldn't hear what I was saying. So we're re-recording. These are the two I painted in the first lesson. We're going to paint a third one now. Um, all right, so let's get started and go to that overhead camera. And I can't wait to get painting with you. All right, here we are folks with our fabulous butterfly outline. Again, if you want an outline and you're not confident in drawing this particular piece, you can join my studio crew. All the outlines are in there as well as additional um, pieces and projects that aren't available on YouTube. So you can check that out. Otherwise, prepare your paper with your butterfly outline and we will get started. So like I said, we're using just three colors and this is a little different from the palette I normally use, which is my palette um, that you see in a lot of my other videos. Here's my core palette I use every day. Um, but we are using just three colors. They're Winsor & Newton colors, they're beautiful colors. Um, I have purple lake, phthalo blue, and black, and I'm working on a ceramic plate. For those of you who are brand new beginners, you do not need to go out and buy an expensive palette or even inexpensive, they're not that expensive, but you don't need to buy a palette until you're ready. Um, feel free to use a ceramic plate that you have around your house, um, clean it off when you're done, throw it in the dishwasher, it's totally fine. Um, you just wanna find something that's white if possible and doesn't have any patterns on it. You can also get one at the dollar store or a flea market or you know Salvation Army or something like that, another thrift store. You just need something that um, is ceramic and it will work great. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start with Purple Lake and we're gonna do that one first. So this is the one I did in the last video. Um, we are going to do this blue as well. I've already painted this, but I actually painted this in a sped up fashion. The process is exactly the same. I just showed you the second color. That will be at the end of this video, and I will just show you kind of in a time-lapse fashion doing the blue as well. The only difference between these two is the way we mix the colors. So in this one, the purple lake, as you'll see when we get started, is going to be all of this center part is all purple lake and then the outside and the body is black. With our blue one, I'm actually gonna mix the phthalo blue and black together to get this darker blue color and then uh, also use the black on the body and on the edges. You could just do it straight phthalo blue, but you'll see when we get to the second video, um, the time lapse of this, I'm actually mixing the black and blue together to get this darker blue to start with and then blending it in. So that's the only difference between the two, but we're gonna start with our purple lake color. So let's just put this one up here. Well, I can't get them both in frame. I could, but I'd rather you see this up close. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just gonna activate our purple lake. So if you have a dot card, you're just gonna take your brush and touch your dot with it and kind of scrub it until you get some paint on your brush. A little bit goes a long way, and then you're gonna bring it to whatever you're using for a palette. 
and just swirl it out. So you can see I have a big lump of paint there still. I don't need it all, and I have all of this paint here just by activating it with a little water. Water is your friend in watercolor. It is part of the process. You wanna be using as much water often as paint. You don't always need to pick up more pigment. Sometimes you just need to pick up a little water. And you'll see that as I go along. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a quadrant to start with and we're gonna start with the pink color. And we're gonna start at the edges and work our way in. Now this has some detailing on it. We'll do that in a second step. We're just gonna be doing a gradient wash first. So going from darkest to lightest in the center. You could also do this the opposite way, darkest in the center to lightest on the edge of the wings, but this is the way we're gonna do it for now. I love this kind of glowing feel you get in the center of the butterfly. I think it looks really cool. All right, so let's start with some pretty concentrated purple lake. And we're just gonna go along the edges of our wing, not going into the part that's gonna be black. So we're leaving that open. And you wanna work pretty quickly because you don't want the edges of this to dry. So you want some really juicy color with quite a bit of water in it. Um, so it's not drying on you. You're gonna rinse off your brush. Okay, I rinsed it off completely. And I came back with just water. And I'm now going to start to blend this out. And this is going to take work. It's going to take a couple of trans or a couple of layers of this while it's all wet. Now, if you're working on 100% cotton paper, this is going to be great for you because once you wet this, it's going to stay wet for a little while, so you have time. You have time to keep adding paint and color. So that's okay, but it's pretty dark up here and, you know, pretty much the same in the middle here. So I want to increase that transition a little. I want this darker area to be a little wider and I want it to be a little bit more gradual. So I just put more pigment on, rinsed my brush off, and now I'm just using a clean brush without even really any water on it just to push this pigment a little further down. And you can see as I continue to move it down, it gets introduced to this area with more water in it and it gets lighter and lighter. So we have this nice gradual shift. And you could do that again if you really wanna go even darker. As long as everything stays damp, you can keep playing with it. Once it starts to dry, once any section of this starts to dry, like say this started to dry and I was still wet up here, you have to stop and let the whole thing dry. So that's why it's important to kind of work quickly and keep all of the areas damp. So now from here, I'm actually going to swipe back in this direction because I don't want to bring too much more paint down, but I want the water to kind of touch the two areas and let it kind of do it naturally. There we go. So that's nice and dark, but it's lighter in the middle, darker on the edge. And you'll see this light part, it looks lighter right now for sure but it is going to, um, once you put black next to it and create contrast, black here and here, this is really gonna pop and start to feel like it's glowing. So stay tuned for that phase. Now there are a bunch of different ways you could do this butterfly. So you could do wet on wet, um, adding in kind of the ribbing or the, the veining of the, not the leaves, not the petals, the wings. You could add the veining of the petals, or the, the wings during the wet on wet phase and as it starts to, to dry a little bit, um, you could add that, but we're gonna let it dry completely. So we're gonna work on all four quadrants with a very, not, um, my gosh, my language is leaving me. Let me try that again. We are going to work on all four quadrants doing a gradient wash. So going from darkest to lightest. And once those are all done and dry, we're gonna add on another layer with a little bit darker color that's gonna add that texture. All right, so I've done this whole area, rinse off my brush. And as you saw on my first kind of stab there, I added, um, I added a little more color than I did on the first one. I'll leave a little gap there, a little white gap between the two. 
just to create some separation. That's just a style choice. You could go up next to it if you wanted. And then again, picking up some more, just gonna introduce some more to the edge here. It's all still wet, unwet, so it's gonna continue to blend into this area as it dries. So when you're working wet on wet, once you put your colors down, they will continue to move and grow as a piece and soften and blend without any assistance from you. The water is doing the work for you. You have a partner in this process. That partner is water. All right, moving on to our third area, same process again. And I'm moving pretty quickly here for the sake of video, not to completely bore you. Um, but you may definitely go much slower than this. Feel free to take your time, pause the video if you need to, and just take your time filling in the four sections. Nothing new or magical is happening on my end that's different in any of these sections. go. So one of the things you can change up as you're going is your pressure. So when you're trying to move less paint, change your pressure. So don't, and when you're trying to move more, you can really put some pressure on and kind of scrub that area, pushing the paint. But if you're really trying to be very gentle, um, use a drier brush with less water on it and lighter pressure. Kind of like a feather, just kind of dusting the edge. And then oop, this, I'm going to go this way, adding water, but try not to pull too much more color down. There we go. Let those dry, let that dry and do our final section. Feel free to turn your paper as you're working. And after this stage, you might be super happy with how your butterfly work looks and you do not have to do the second phase. This is your painting and you get to decide. And that's the beauty of being an artist. So all of you out there who are painting are artists right now. And being an artist is just choosing, one of the main parts of it is just choosing when to stop. So if you stop after this phase, then that is your preference. Good for you. But I like to give you options so that you have an arsenal in your tool belt as you create. All right, I'm just gonna blend this a little bit more. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I definitely love my first quadrant the most. I think it, the, because I spent the most time there and I kind of went over a couple times, but I think the gradient is like beautiful. It's okay to be proud of your work too when you get it right. Mm. Show the world. All right, there we are, beautiful butterfly. Look at that. So like I said, you could be done here. Not com with the complete thing, we'll put in the black still, but in terms of the wings. We're gonna let the wings dry and we're gonna work on our center. And then we're gonna go to the edges because most of the quadrants in the center, because they had the least amount of paint or pigment on them, are dry. We'll avoid this one as much as we can for a few minutes. If you have a drying tool, a blow dryer, a heat tool, I have, I have this one. I think I got it at Michael's. I think it's meant for embossing, but it's just a heat tool. It doesn't have as much velocity as a, a blow dryer, so it's not going to blow as much wind, but it gets hot and does have some air, and it will dry your paper and your pe or sections of your paper, if you want to do that, much faster. All right, so moving to our black on our ceramic palette here. Again, if you have a dot card, go ahead and just rub your brush over the top of that dot 
and then pull it onto a palette. And you might have to do that a couple times depending on um, how dry your dot is, which it should be when you first get it completely dry. The dot cards, you can use them. Um, and then if there's paint left on them, that's great. Just set it out to dry somewhere. And once it's completely dry, you can move it around, you can touch it, it won't spread on anything. And then if you wanna use it again later, you just re-wet it. Just like um, anybody out there who has their own watercolor paints. You just let them dry in between uh, sessions and then you can always go back to them and just re-wet them. So I've, I've uh, activated or mixed out my black here. I am gonna add some water to it because I want it to have um, a grayness to it. And blacks in watercolor often are going to be gray, even when you put them down pretty fully concentrated. Um, you, you usually have to add a couple layers in order to get them to register as full black. But we want our black to have dimension and be interesting, not just be flat black. So we're adding some water. We want it to be a little gray. We're gonna add a couple of layers. And as you can see, I'm leaving white spaces. I'm sketching my way around this beautiful butterfly. Again, I'm trying to make sure all these sections are dry before touching any of them. All right, and then while that's still working, I'm gonna drop in some darker color, especially near the joints at the base of the head and the top of the mm, thorax. Is this the thorax? I don't know. Those are it's the extent of my biology knowledge remembrance of insects. You can even pull out some color. So I'm just gonna pull out some color down below. And this is really up to you, however textured you want your center to be. You can let this dry, it will lighten up a little bit and then you can do another layer if you'd like or leave it more on the gray side. So let's see, you can see on here, this one has lots of gray areas in the middle. It's a little darker here, a little darker, definitely towards the joint areas. Um, and this one will be about the same once it dries. Antenna, so you have a brush, you're gonna get way up on the tip of that brush. If you are not confident getting up on the tip of your brush, you can definitely practice this before you put it on your piece, um, just on a scrap piece of paper. But if you're not confident, I highly recommend getting a liner or a rigger brush to add to your arsenal. This brush, here's one, do, 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 kind of sneaking into frame here. This is a two slash zero size. And rigger brushes have these long, whoops, long, long bristles at the top. And when you get them wet, they get really fine and pointed. They don't hold a lot of paint. You have to re-dip it often, but they will make perfectly fine lines. It's actually hard to make a thick line with those brushes. So highly recommend those to add to your arsenal of brushes, especially if you find yourself doing a lot of things with fine lines. And if you're getting frustrated because you get to that part and you like do a bunch of them really great and then you have one like extra thick line because you know your hand slipped or you just weren't paying attention as much, Go ahead and get a rigger brush. It'll make your life easier, or a fine liner, they're called also. All right, so we're, we're getting really close to dry. I'm gonna start over here. This one's the driest. And we're just gonna work our way around the edge of the butterfly, this part that's gonna be in black. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Some of it I'm gonna add some water to, and I want it to be a little lighter and just have some texture and be interesting, not just flat black. It will still register as black if you have really dark areas of it, but it doesn't have to be a perfect wash of black. Okay, this I'm not gonna leave, I don't think I'm gonna leave any white spots. I'm gonna fill all of that in. You can go, I have another butterfly one in the Studio Crew classroom that involves bleed proof white, which is this fabulous stuff. So if you have bleed proof white or acrylic or gouache, you can add little decorative dots to the edge. We're not gonna do that in this video because I can't put gouache in a kit. 
at least not the ones that I do. All right. And again, the same thing is going to happen in all four quadrants here. No magic is happening between this one and the next one. Nothing specific other than they'll all be slightly different because some of them will have different gray areas and different dark, darker black areas. So if you watch me, I often pick up water, just water in addition uh, to continue to spread my paint in an area. I pick up water just as often as I pick up paint. And I find that a lot of students in person that I can see um, who are working in front of me when they're new, their first instinct is always to pick up more paint. But it shouldn't be. You should be thinking about water just as often as you're thinking about paint. So I'm painting through this area here. Now, if I don't want it to be completely flat black and I don't mind introducing more water, I'm going to pick up water here to continue to spread this. I can always go back in once the area is completely filled in and pick up more black paint and add it on top. But pick up water. So I'm my water's off frame. I'm picking up water <laughs> and just filling in that section and then dropping in some more black paint. And moving on. I need a little glare on this one right side. Sorry about that. So our next step is going to be adding the ribbing. So we'll prepare for that in a second. I call it the ribbing. I don't it veining the texture to the wings that kind of accentuate this already kind of streaky kind of look and feel we have go, going here. Again, you don't have to do this if you're really happy with your butterfly. This is a slightly more advanced. Slightly. You can definitely do it. And then depending on your style and taste, you can add as many layers to these sections as you want. All right, so there we go. So we have pretty much the majority of the butterfly painted in or really all of it painted in. I got a little black dot there. Um, and now we're gonna do some texture on top and then add some splatters. So what we're gonna be adding are the, this texture here. Okay, so all of these textured lines that go in. You do have to wait till your piece is pretty much completely dry. So make sure to take a moment right now if you need to, to dry your piece fully. I'm gonna do that with my heat tool and then we'll come back and get started. All right, we're back. All right, so going back to your palette, this is where we are going to mix some of our um, Spring Lake with a little bit of black. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of black to kind of deepen the, the shade of this color a little bit, but I'm going to add water. I want it to be subtle. We don't have to go super crazy, super dark. And the biggest mistake folks make is they go too dark and they make their lines too straight and perfect. So how we're going to start this is we're going to start adding some of this color up at the top like we did before. Just a little bit. And you saw how I skipped a few spots. I'm going to rinse off my brush and I'm just going to take the color that's up here and I'm going to start bringing it down in streaked motions like this. You can pick up a little more if it's starting to run out on you. And as long as you've made your color, it's good. it looks pretty dramatic here, okay? So that is not the look we're going for. But I'm gonna go in with my brush and I'm gonna blend these out. I'm gonna soften the edges. And as long as you've um, added quite a bit of water to this, as it's drying, these are gonna lighten up a little bit. So this is a great one to do a little practice card on as well. And then as you continue to do this to each of the areas, it starts to all come together. 
So when I'm doing my lines, you notice this butterfly thing comes to a skinnier point. So it's narrower here and wider here. So my lines need to follow that same trajectory. So if I have something coming from the outside, it's kind of bending towards the inner area. And you can have lines that start, that are even lighter, that start in the middle and work their way out. So this does take a delicate hand. You should have very little paint on your brush. You should be right up on the tip of your brush. You should be applying very little pressure. And that's why I say this is slightly more advanced. It's not like put paint here, you know, blend out and you know, it's a little foolproof. This takes a little bit more of a delicate hand and knowing when and where to stop and put paint. All right, so that side is done. We're gonna move to this side, do the same thing. So adding a little darker color to the edge, rinsing off my brush and just starting to sketch those lines in. They should all be a little different. You know, they're not having an identical pattern in any way. So you can go from the center out as well. Just make sure if you're starting in the center, you have very little paint on your brush and it's very light. So these starting from the edge, rinse off that brush and start to use the tip of my brush to gently, ever so gently, work your way in. There we go. So now we have kind of that similar texture on all of them. It kind of blends together a little bit better. It's not just a straight gradient wash. There is texture in there and you can kind of make this as crazy textured um, or as subtle as you would like. I'm just gonna blend this out a little bit here. So our last step, if you're satisfied with all of your edges, you don't wanna put any layers on, um, you're happy with your blacks and grays, we can do a little bit of splatter. Now, if you have a bigger brush, this is easier. So we're gonna take our purple lake and we're gonna make it really juicy. So the smaller the brush you have, the smaller the splatters you get generally. So it's hard to get really big ones, um, but that's okay. We're gonna stick with smaller. So we're, so we're gonna really roll our brush, really saturate it with paint. And then we're gonna take it, you can protect any surfaces around by putting down paper towel or scrap pieces of paper, or old things you don't want. I'm not gonna worry about it on my studio table. Wear an apron, that kind of thing. But it doesn't get too crazy. You're gonna take your brush, hold it above your paper. You don't have a lot of control over this and you're just going to start to splatter. Now some people love this look and some people hate it. So you don't have to do it. All right, so we get these fun little splatters that give our painting kind of energy. They break up that white, white background. Now I'll show you if you have a bigger brush, so this is a size 12. So this is gonna hold a lot more water in the belly. So get it nice and wet and then pick up some of your color, really soak it up in the belly of your brush. And now you'll see when I do these, you're gonna get more paint and larger, more dramatic splatters. You can also do it directionally by like pushing it this way or that way. Um, you can flick the top of your brush to get that to come out. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can add the splatter to the page. You can also use two brushes together like this to tap each other instead of your finger. And then one of the other things I'll tell you is in addition to splatter of color, you can splatter water on once you've splattered, either before or after you splatter color on, and those water droplets will catch and pick up and make interesting 
patterns with the extra splatters that you add on to it. So color and water. So there we go, we have our splatter. All right, so stay tuned if you want to see, again, I'm not gonna go through this whole thing again for the blue in terms of step-by-step talky-talky. -step I will spare you that, but we I will put a time-lapse of that right here. Um, but I wanna say thank you for joining me for this video. If you have a kit, thank you for being introduced to the wonderful world of watercolor. If you are a subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing to my channel and coming back. If you leave comments, you are my faves. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but if you leave a comment, you are a proclaimed favorite of mine. Um, whether it's just to say hi, to ask a question about something I'm using um, or a technique that I've used, um, or to suggest something for the future. Um, so thank you, those are the highlight of my day every day. So don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the description. If you wanna join the studio crew, link in the description as well. Thank you so much, take care everybody, and happy painting to all of you. Uh, I'm Shana Searcy, and I will see you soon.